Yes. Yes, you can you can fuck up the whole thing. We are already streaming, you should be aware of that. So Fantastic. <laughs> uh, I want to make sure that it's working on SceneSat. Uh, what is SceneSat? Ah, or... yes, it looks great. SceneSat. Uh, set live. Yes. Boom. Now, hopefully, it starts playing. Okay, Flashy Lamer says that it's on, so it's working on Twitch at least. Let's see if scene set is up. And Facebook. Problem is always Facebook. Hey, Adok, how are you doing? Ah, see? And now someone paused it and changed to something else. Who was it? Yes, Helmut, uh, it's on. Well, wait. Can you just close the list, uh, actually? Close lists? How? I don't know, you you did the room, like, just, can you just close or lock the list right now? Uh, no. <laughs> hmm. Just don't go to the ones you don't want to go to? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I don't do anything right now, I just stop editing, like, we have, I, I'm missing one production and it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. There so okay, well, so if you have the link later, we can add it when we are talking about your section specifically, so it's fine. Okay. What okay. Kind of do I have? On the the Twitch streams, usually like twenty seconds, something like that. It depends a bit, but usually it's around twenty seconds. <laughs> okay, I see. Uh, I'm more curious. Why isn't this working on Facebook? Active. What about now? Is it working now? As soon as I have this working on Facebook, we can uh, start the program for real, which means we could be here all night. Well, it's the, uh, oh. it's the delay between uh, this appearing and uh, Twitch normal? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, everything that is on Twitch has like a 20 second delay. So you should focus your commentary on what we see on our internal watch together and not on twitch okay twitch is just for you to type stuff don't follow the stream there oh, well you guests don't follow the stream there the other people on the chat should most probably okay facebook is working okay facebook is working everything should be working so i think we can start the show let me just announce it that we are streaming now uh mystery demo cynthia on ik starting now with two exclamation or three exclamation marks, let's go crazy because that's how we roll. Maybe I should uh, announce it on Twitter as well. Twitch TV, Twitch TV. Sorry. Of course, the problem with the tiny size coding stuff is that usually it doesn't have sound, and when it does have sound, it's like totally loud. So, uh, be aware of that, people. <laughs> I will try to control it a little bit on my end. But uh, if there is a sudden burst of uh, sound, you know, uh, not my fault. Anyways, let's play a few lists of this 256 bytes. Hopefully it should be working. Okay, so welcome everyone to Mystery Demo Scene Theater 9000 uh, Season 3 Episode 8. And uh, Truck wants us to listen music for Tiny Airports. That is, that is also a nice soundtrack. Guests for us today, we have Tomcat of Abaddon, we have Sensen Stahl, and we have Helmut of, of Desire. Helmut, you're not showing your t-shirt. Yeah, you should open up. So yeah, today we have a special on tiny size coding stuff. And of course, if you don't know how to do size coding stuff, you should go to sizecoding.org. I'm going to type the address here, which is a nice wiki that a few guys did with lots of uh, pro tips. And you need to know Assembler, of course. And uh, what else do, do, do we need? I, I think maybe we should, uh, since you got, all three of you guys are new to the show, maybe you should like uh, introduce yourselves. Like, uh, how, when did you start your demo scene career? How did you... Like, very short. It doesn't have to be very long. So, Tomcat, how did you get started on the demo scene? I was coding at Z Z ZX Spectrum. Oh, you're a spectrum sceneer. Okay, I didn't know that. That's cool. And after that, uh, for PC in 1991 uh, till 1996, 
I, I had some entries at assembly parties that in Helsinki. And after that, uh, I have a pause, uh, nearly 20 years or so. Holy crap. I, and and, and uh, I, had a <laughs> came, I had a came back at QB. QB yeah, party. QB party. Yeah, I heard about that. In 1990, uh, in, <laughs> in, 16 2016 16, yeah i think yeah hmm, okay and there was the first 256 byte intro at that time at qb party mondel universe yeah okay this is the short story <laughs> i didn't know you were a spectrum senior that's very interesting stuff did you actually do any demos for spectrum or just you know random small uh, effects we, we did some uh our group name was the cat. The cat. Okay. Yeah. You, you can find something at Poet, but uh, the most of the products were, were lost. Okay. We have some tapes, but uh, we can't read it. That's a shame that, uh, that you lost stuff, but well, it is, it's the, a part of the demo scene. Uh, okay. Next up, Sense and Style. Tell us a little bit. How did you get started in the demo scene? Um, the first contact with the scene was about 2001, I believe. I saw uh, some demo by Farb Rausch, then I forgot about it in 2008. I somehow stumbled across uh, more productions on the net and uh, went to Breakpoint, my first demo party. Again, forgot about it. And in 2000 and end of 2009, I decided to um, code. And in 2010, I just started to hang around. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the short story. So how, like, what is the fascination with uh, size limited entries? Because all three of you guys mostly focus on doing assembler. Is it because you only like assembler? You don't like doing C++ stuff or... Can you well, answer the, that sense and stuff? Well, in the uh, in the nineties, I uh, uh, coded in uh, Turbo Pascal and started <laughs> to uh, make uh, inline assembler um, because the routines were faster. Yeah, yeah. And in two thousand and nine, as I said, um, I thought about what to do and. Um, remembered oh assembler is a very fine thing and so i uh, stuck with it okay now this one has sound just to mess up with the, with the stuff I'll try to lower it a little bit oh, there's something wrong here i think it's this sound is up no okay Okay, I fixed it. Um, okay, you're saying Turbo Pascal, you did some stuff there to do in line to be faster code, and then you just got used to it. Yeah, because yeah, because um, the all the um, units, it's it's all crap. <laughs> make, your, make your own stuff; it's uh, more fun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Helmut, what about your story? How how did you end up doing stuff for the demo scene? Uh, it's a little bit weird because I started coding as a kid actually, and we coded uh, in the GDR in the in East Germany, and we had stuff like Robotron. And with the fall of the um, wall, there came uh, crazy stuff to us like C64 and PC and stuff. But I just went uh, dipped into it, but I never had contact to the demo scene, which was funny because there were on my, on my school there were guys that were like two old, uh, two years older than me having discs and wanted to exchange, you know, like how do you get into the demo scene? And I was not interested. So I never got into the demo scene, but I was coding uh, occasionally. And I just looked it up. Um, the first thing which I really, really uh, found from the demo scene was Crystal Dreams 2 from Triton. And I commented on uh, Poet. Crystal Dreams 2, it was yeah. A first, yeah uh, the first thing I have ever seen like a demo, it was on uh, some crazy kind of uh, CD-ROM and I injected it and it had so many stuff. And like, I can just uh, code. I was casually coding, I was doing fractal stuff in Plasma, pretty bad, and I was a chess player too, as a kid. It, the demo ran on my uh, 386 with 40 megahertz and did things I didn't think were possible. Uh, right after their Plasma put mine to shame, the fractal zoom fucked me right in the brain. So here <laughs> have my heart. 
So then I was like uh, doing a break and never having contact to Demosin ever again. But then there was this one demo, I think it was the Pulse from Rolla. Hmm. And I was digging because I remembered because I was doing the same dungeon style. I was doing uh, Pascal and Cubasic coding, and some stuff was like awkwardly slow. And you can yeah, actually, you I have this a... here. I'm gonna play it real quick. Yeah, this one. Uh, yeah, yes, this one. And I was like, how is he doing this? And I was I was writing him uh, as as a male. And I was like, how did you do it? And how do I put your assembler code? How can I make it work? And he gave some, yeah, use this one and this one. And I noticed from the uh, instructions, yeah, I have done something like this before. I have done this move AL13 uh, hex and interrupt 10. And you, you know, I have put bytes on the screen and stuff. And this is what basically got me back interested. This was 2008 or nine, I don't, don't even know. Mm -hmm. And then back in the scene, I got 2013 when I had free time, lots of free time about studying IT. I was like, why not just jump back into coding? So this is, which was my first contact to the real demo scene, was like this. It's like my demo scene career is like, uh, I think, five years old or something. Well, so why, I, is, I really why assembler really... and not, you know, why don't you use Unity Engine and do like 3D engines and stuff like that? Well, why do you like I was, assembler? I do, actually, because I'm working, uh, I have a full-time job. I'm working with um, artificial intelligence and uh, deep convolutional neural networks. So I'm uh, used to all this high-level stuff. But this one is different. It's like more uh, getting to the essence of stuff, like essence of code, essence of graphics, essence of sounds, which has to be compressed and intertwined in, in a way which makes it like clear, like like a Bible. You can you can just read it. Like what I did first was this uh, minimum pain program, which uh, someone described as a as a smallest and most bug free ever existing program he, he knew because you can see it all at once you don't have to scroll you don't have to look stuff up you don't have to shift click to jump to procedures you don't have to include stuff you just see everything on one page and i think this is what got me fascinated like like really getting to the essence of stuff really like um like to the core like as small as possible concept as small as possible as clean as possible and as elegant as possible not even like what is the best 256 byte demo, but taking a concept and getting to the core. And this is what this is what got me hooked when I did the, the pain program and the, the matrix program. I think this eight byte uh, text mode effect. This is really like when when things are getting crazy, you just compress it as much as possible, and then get to something which nobody uh, thought would have been possible. Like this is what motivates me. And this is not possible with anything else. Like you can. Um, if you want, you can define your language. I saw this like there's a stack exchange of uh, code coding and stuff, and they have weird languages where you can just write two bytes and it doesn't affect. That means you can design language around code effects, and then you have small code. But that's not the same thing because this is uh, this evolved after after all languages uh, have been have been evolved. This came just way later. So the only the only real uh, language which allows you to get to the essence for me is this handler. So if I yeah. want to do something Did else, you, like... Do you know that uh, project by, what's it called? Uh, it's not VC. It's one of the Finnish guys that did the... the, the um... Ah, shit. What's the name of the guy? I don't know. <laughs> it's a Finnish guy and he does this uh, compiler kind of thing. Yeah. Ibn is by Viznut. Thank you, Porosian. Uh, he, does this, he does this like self-contained language that is useful for both visuals and sound. And it's by Viznot. If you guys don't know it, you should check it out. It's very interesting because you can do everything inside it and it's very intuitive and, and well, it, it's similar to Assembler, but not quite. So it's very interesting. Um, okay, okay. So yeah, I think we should uh, pass on to that part of the yeah. show where you, you guys had this idea to do like a small selection, each of you, who can explain me the rules? I think, was it uh, Helmut that came up with it or was it Sans install? I know it was Tomcat actually. Yeah, okay. Tomcat. Okay, so Tomcat, can you explain us the, the rules of these selections? Uh, okay, but my first idea was I won't talk too much. <laughs> <So> <laughs> th this was my first idea. And the second <laughs> was, come on. <laughs> Uh, is, is it more guests so I, I don't have to sp speak too much so uh, the the other idea was uh, it, it would be more personal if we uh, select products from each other uh, everybody should select three 
entries from the others. And after this, three from uh, our, so mine on, on products. Mm -hmm. And uh, an other three or any other author, any other coder uh, product. So we choose uh, 12 small, tiny intros by uh, every guest. Okay. So I, I guess we'll start with your selections and we'll, we'll ask other people to commentate on them, I guess, because you're not, you're not very uh, uh, at ease speaking to the public. So uh, Speakor of 138, who is this from then? Is this, <coughs> this, this, is, this is from Helmut. Helmut. Okay, so Helmut, tell Helmut. us, well, yeah, yeah, when yeah. did you make this and why did you make this? I said I could... Uh, I'm... Uh, you want to say something? Yeah, I said I like it because uh, it's a uh, it has it is it is speaker sound and yeah. it looks quite nice. The detailing and the blur, I like it. Yeah. Your uh, turn. Can can people on the screen hear it right now? Because I yeah, can't. Yeah, yeah. You, can you need okay. to put the volume a little louder, but you can hear it. So this this is really funny because I was always uh, tr uh, playing around the sound back then when I was coding to basic I was like I think like 12 or 13 years old and I was like doing you know like um, experimenting with sound everything you could you could possibly think of like adding stuff and subtracting stuff and dividing stuff so I just chose to divide a value by a continuous value like taking a constant 30,000 or something and divide it by one by two by three and then play this value which is like a reciprocal curve. So funnily enough, uh, this is exactly how a timer works on MS-DOS, or maybe it's not MS-DOS, it's like the uh, uh, x86 structure, or whatever the timer is called. It's, it's just, it has a fixed frequency, and you send a divider to it, and then it gives you back the frequency. And it turns out, if you just have a linear range of values, and you put it out, it makes this bass sound, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. But it's a little bit distorted because when you divide by like one and two, it has very high frequencies. And so I decided to cut these frequencies off and there was space. So what to do with the space, just put in melody. So actually it perfectly fits because I just uh, substitute the parts of the bass kick, which nobody wants to hear because it makes ugly bleeps with an actual melody. And funnily enough, this even is um, interesting because um, if you divide something by uh, like four, or divided by eight, then it's harmonic. If you divide it by four and six, it's also harmonic. So I don't even have to translate between frequencies and dividers. I just send like random values which uh, harm do uh, have a harmonic on their own. And harmonic so they, connections, yeah. Yeah, of course, uh, like harmonic frequencies, and it's all it, it's all like as if the designer of the timer already had in mind to make sound with it. It just comes naturally, just send values to it and play. Sound is so emergent, like anything that has a pattern just sounds good because that's that's so it's the proper nature of sound to have. If you have a repetition thing of some sort, you already have a sound going. You get a rhythm yeah. going and uh, yeah. So what about this uh, next so, this one that was picked? It's Quattro Intorama. This was a collaboration between uh, Sessenthal and Helmut, apparently. Yeah, kudos just... to, to Sensen Style because he actually has the idea that the, the core uh, production was already existed when we optimized it. When we started optimizing, there was already uh, like a minimum version, but maybe you, uh, Sensen Style, can elaborate on this one. Well, the first version was very uh, crappy, uh, to be honest, <laughs> and had nothing to do with the main idea of Helmut uh, approaching this uh, thing in the new version but uh, the idea of uh, some windows going up with different effects uh, was an idea i got a long time ago actually i think um before the uh, mr nice bot in vitro for uh, revision one of the windows um, was actually uh, the background of that intro and uh, having Maybe multiple effects is not new, but it's interesting because it's all in 256 bytes. So you have to have like for each effect, you can only use 64 bytes. To no, it's them not. Together. It's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. But, but Helmut can go in, in uh, depth of the um, 
code itself because he made uh, actually the whole work. I was the guy saying all oh, this and that, uh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, there, it's true, there are uh, different uh, 256 byte intros with um, several effects, but uh, that's actually the first one where they uh, are really just on one screen without uh, switching screens, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think so Sentinel Star is very modest because he did all the design work here. Um, I just came up with like with the with the idea to go from the standard uh, VGA palette to something custom colors can do, and even there you uh, saved as two bytes sentence style. <laughs> that was your work. It's just yeah. you know his idea of custom colors and like size coded together so to make space again for design. And if you just notice like there are two lines on the left side which I think indicate on a real movie strip they're silent. So this is a very hidden design note, which I think Sensor Star is famous for, just to put design uh, into these tiny intros. Like, these two lines uh, take up, I don't know, I don't, 12 bytes or 15 bytes, do you remember this? We just we put it in because we had space to do to do so. And it's, it's like the left line on real film strips, it indicates silence. I didn't know so that, before. actually. <laughs> you didn't? You didn't know no. that? Come on. No, um, I only heard about it when, uh, I don't know who it was. Was it Novi? Someone posted that uh, on Puet. I can't, I can't remember. Yeah, so anyway, I, it's it's uh... it was just design. <laughs> uh, what about this one, Everbloom? So, uh, is it, is this still from Helmut? I believe so, yes. right? Yeah. So it's what can you tell us about it? This one is uh, 64 bytes. Uh, I had the idea to combine the black white background with something colorful in front. And in my study, I think I did one in QBasic or something like that years ago. I just had three cubes with colors, like different in front of the black white. And I thought, this is awesome looking. This is just, you know, the default palette and it can have beautiful effects. And then I realized I have done a lot of fractals, but I've never done classical fractals. Like this is just a, a Julia set, but mm -hmm. optimized for special food. And again, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants because Rola uh, invented this uh, special trick of how to get screen coordinates from the pointer, really, really efficient. And I used this one and played a little bit, a little bit around. You have to know like this, uh, I can do it on the screen if you want. So you have these four quadrants mm -hmm. of a coordinate system, and I'm just using this one, this mm -hmm. one. And this is a special trick. So I just could ad uh, adjust the formula so this is not a normal Julia fractal, but a special one. And then it's just a fractal with the background. So the stuff you save from a normal fractal, you can do to implement the background. Then it was just size coding, and there you go. OK. Um, I guess we're moving on to uh, Scrollingham Palace by Sense Install. This seems like a scroller, but in 3D. How the hell can you do 3D in 256 bytes? Uh, the idea is pretty simple. Um, you, uh, I actually wanted uh, to write um, some kind of write-up for sizecoding.org, but never finished it. Um, I just uh, print, uh, printed out the text on the screen and added uh, the uh, set, uh, set axis to it mm -hmm. and uh, rotated it like a cube. So that's about it. It's not that magical, but it looks good, I guess. <laughs> uh, my awesome. thing is, I, I don't see how you can do all the 3D calculation stuff in 256 well, it's, bytes. It's, it's, not, it's uh, not real 3D, because there's no uh, perspective. Hmm. It's, it's 3D, but uh, without perspective. It's just rotating, and the coordinates don't uh, get smaller um, the further you get away ah, from I see. the uh, screen. But I guess you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't see it anyway because of the resolution mm -hmm. and the size of the letters because they are uh, not scaled up. Besides the ones below. Okay, what about this one? Enjoy Evoke. I guess this was like a mini invitation that you did for Evoke. No, it looks similar to the invitation that was actually uh, my release uh, for Evoke. Okay. So uh, what can you tell us about it? It has hexagons, it has arrows. Well, the, well in design that... Design every, every word, design. <laughs> well, 
Um, Design arrows. <laughs> in in that time, I had yeah. in that time I uh, somehow liked uh, hexagons, like uh, in the revision um, release uh, I made, and I had the background and thought, oh, hmm, what can I do? And uh, yeah, I just uh, put text into it. Yeah, and some arrows. Yeah, and uh, how long does it usually take you to do like these intros? Because some of them seem like to take a lot of time to optimize and to know some tricks, but other ones felt like you do them like in one afternoon or something like that. Is it true? No, or... um, um, the, actually, the most time uh, I'm spending is uh, arranging things, uh, cho uh, choosing the right colors, um, well, the, the optic side. Mm -hmm. it, and, and the design, it's, uh, I guess... 70% of the time. Okay. So what about... So, it's, so many, uh, many intros are ready, but uh, I play around with this and that um, to get something I really like. So the code is... Uh, it's fast. Done. Uh, but the design part is uh, which eats the most time. This one is that uh, ILS ILS fractals or what is that? No, thing it's moving? just uh, it's no fractal. It's just a randomized. Uh, the uh, coordinates are just randomized. <laughs> okay. It, it's uh, there's no uh, real math behind it. It's just all random. And this is uh, an ode to to those intros from the Japanese guy or OX. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because because it's awesome. <laughs> Okay, that's cool. Secret the, stage the, boss in 256 bytes. Yeah, there is a playable version. Oh, really? By the way. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not... Um, was it you, Tomcat, who started that? Uh, no, not just me. Many of us. Yeah. Kumel, and the first was uh, VBC, uh, W. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, this right. It reminds me a little bit of that intro from Poi, where he had like on the favicon of the browser, he managed to do that that uh, that old C sixty four game from from the giant llamas, like uh, what's it called, invaders of something. It's a shooter like this, a little spaceship that goes around on a landscape, hitting things and trying to uh, catch survivors to rescue them somehow. So very nice stuff. Um, next up we have Wormy by Kamun. I guess this is uh, one of the entries from anyone, not our guests here. Yeah, this is my selection and I like it. It, it looks very, very nice and very yeah. smooth. Yeah, it's a classical effect on the demo scene, but it looks very good. Uh, this is 256 bytes, so yeah. It's yeah. uh, even unmatched in like how good it looks. It, as I think the, the old productions have a special flavor where you can see these guys really had a clue. Sometimes I feel we don't have this uh, kind of approach anymore because stuff from back then, the top, I don't know, don't know the top 50 of like everything before 2008 or something, it just looks so good. People mm -hmm. really knew what they're doing. And nowadays well, it seems we don't reach this anymore. Well, Camus... It's my opinion. Uh, Kamun actually had a, a lot of very good looking uh, intros. Most of them are um, very, very good. It's uh, one of the things that I wanted to mention during this uh, show is the number of people doing these limited size intros because it doesn't seem to be too many people. It seems to be like 20 people overall did like the, the at top. Most, at most. <laughs> and active, it seems like it's like six people, maybe 10. And it was like some guys only do like one entry every year or something like that. But uh, it seems like that everyone has a lot of interest and they you swap uh, tricks and source code a lot. So uh, I, I don't know. I just wanted to throw that out there. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts or if you want to talk about that. Uh I am doing a bad job uh, on promoting the stuff because we already have the size coding org and like I just wrote in the Twitch chat, it's actually not that difficult because I, already, uh, I think people like uh, Gargai some, uh, some time ago did uh, a Raycaster in 256 bytes and he was like in his own comments, well, that's, 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 that's easy. And I was like, yeah, and you should, you should tell people 
it's not that difficult actually. It's just the code gets small if you do a sampler and if you get to know tricks from other guys. And we live in that age where we can share all the tricks, and it's actually really not that difficult. Yeah, that's it. We have to do. We have to promote this. We have to get people into it and it's, tell it's, them. It's such a niche, stuff. you know, compared to uh, even yeah. demo scene itself. It's hard to get people interested in doing stuff. And like, if you go yeah. to to size intros, it's even more. Although on the other hand, it's more accessible because there are a lot of people who know how to code assembler, but they don't really care about, you know, designing a whole very complex scene. And if you just do like one single effect, it's a lot easier and it's not as hard to think about uh, design for it. Let's call it that. For uh, example, one... on my work today, we had a student uh, which applied for us. He was living in France and was like 25 years old and was an Indian guy, actually. And he wrote, I can do C++, C Sharp, and I can do this and that. And he was write, writing, I can assembly. And I, I oh, you, oh, yeah, can you assembly? What do you know still? And he was like, addition, subtraction, exchanging, and yeah, what else? And he was like, yeah, you can do this fancy stuff with uh, addition with carry and subtraction with carry. So he obviously knows how to do it. And there are plenty of guys out there who know how to do it, but they just don't take it on making small intros. We, 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 did, uh, we just should do a better job on promoting this stuff. We just should reach out there and try to get talented people in. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to the three by Tomcat of Abaddon. This one is teacups and it has sound. Is this PC speaker, Tomcat? Yes, yes. <laughs> there, are, there are not that many ways that you can get sound working. Like some people use MIDI, other people use PC speaker. Is there any other way that you guys can think of to do sound for DOS stuff? I don't think so. Um, maybe ad lib. But, yeah, uh, yeah, at I, I remember on yeah. SizeCoding.org there was a list of those uh, stuff as well. So yeah. Uh, what, what about other platforms? Because we've been doing, we've been talking about all these intros, all of them are for DOS. And I guess you guys use uh, DOSBox? Or the, actually, another question before we talk about other platforms. Do you actually, guys, do you only use DOSBox or do you actually have a machine with DOS to test this stuff? Two of them, two of them. I have one XP machine and one, I can even show it, like this one, do you see it? Mm -hmm. It's a notebook with definitely old, it just has Windows XP on it. And my other uh, notebook is on the living room. Oops, sorry. It's my smartphone, which has <laughs> just, uh, which I just put a stick in and boot to Fridos. There's my Fridos stick. So I just test on three platforms, like on Dotbox and on Fridos and on Windows XP. And sometimes when I'm uh, really trying to make it comp uh, as compatible as uh, possible, then I'm having a virtual machine with MS-DOS. Uh, I could really do an MS-DOS boot stick uh, as well. But yeah, it's difficult because if you get smaller and smaller and smaller, these tiny differences uh, start to um, be a real pain in the ass. Like you can do this bytes, but if you do it on XP, it doesn't work. And if it's doing Fritos, it doesn't work. So you have 34 bytes and you have to like make space, which is really painful in this time, tiny sizes, just to make it compatible. I, so, was, I was gonna show you, I was gonna ask you if, uh, if if there were a lot of differences in the emulation. If Is the emulation on DOSBox already up to it? Or not? Yeah, uh, Tomcat also has the, the pen drive ready to boot to DOS. <laughs> I think it has PCM or something like this because DOSBox, uh, I figured out, is a uh, special. I think it, it emulates a special uh, kind of hardware. So you can really code against this API, so to speak, and do intros which are like three or four bytes smaller just because of DOSBox. There's a secret mode. I, I call it secret mode because you can actually call a mode. It's, uh, um, it's a bit six, cheating, nine, though, isn't it? Now, I don't know because it has a special graphics card which it emulates, and this graphic cards had like escape sequences, not VESA modes, not VGA modes, mm -hmm. but in between. So you can ex uh, access high um, high resolution graphic modes with just the normal way, like move AL13, but it's like move AL69, and there's 640 times 400 in 256 colors, but it's just on DOSBox. So there's stuff just on DOSBox. You can like wait for, I think, uh, a tiny amount of time with a halt command one byte it just works on dotbox so really if you get into things you realize it's a special subsystem it's not you know it's not emulating a pc it's like a special pc which is emulated and it's not really good you can do stuff which does not work on real machines you can do like um you can odd address uh words like if you go to an, an even address and uh, access a word it works if you do it with, with an odd address the system crashes 
I mean, the Dropbox doesn't crash. It just doesn't care. It like you can do stuff if it's not possible. So if anybody out there is listening to this stuff, please don't uh, code on Dropbox. Try to do it to make it work on a real system. Because I mean, will ideally, we want Dropbox to be the exact emulation of the real system. So, uh, so you should yeah, aim but, but for Dropbox as the platform. You should aim for the real system as a platform. Yeah, of course. But when you do size coding, when you do size coding, you have to um, you have to uh, save every byte, and you have to do dirty stuff. And if you try to do dirty stuff, and you realize it just works on DOSBox, it's may maybe a pain. I stepped into this stuff like 2014 with my function entry, which I just tested in DOSBox, and it just didn't work on a real machine. So people out there, if you're trying to get into coding, don't test on DOSBox. Get a virtual machine, get free DOS, get MS-DOS, whatever, get an XP system. But don't test on DOSBox. It may hurt you. What about the difference between DOSBox and DOSBox X? Oh god, I can't tell. <laughs> DOSBox X has more instructions, Pentium Pro instructions. So you can use more instructions. I think DOSBox X is better, but uh, always the power of the real machine uh, uh, has, has more power. You can do complex stuff. So I think it's easy. Everybody has USB. It's very easy to do make it bootable with Rufus. Mm -hmm. And then you can do, and if your prod crash, it's no problem. Now the reboot, it's only three seconds, not more. Yeah, so, I mean, in the yeah. old times, it took like 30 seconds to boot your computer, and now it's like almost instantly. <laughs> yeah. And this is um, the last one from uh, Tomcat. It's uh, but, just scrolling uh, text uh, with deformation. Wait. Go go back. To Tektronic? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so what do you want to say so, about this one? Just uh, because this uh, this is again PC PC speaker, mm -hmm. but it's completely different uh, approach because this is byte beat. Uh, the, the previous one was beep, uh, and this is uh, digitized data with formulas. Mm -hmm. People so, on the chat were saying that this one sounds better than the, than the previous one, and it does it has like yeah. a good kick to it. Yes, uh, it's more complex sound, more mm, better. Uh, Can any of you guys tell me better, the difference between the coding sound for, for assembly and coding sound for those bite-sized uh, instruction set? That, uh, that was this big craze a couple of years ago. Uh, where you could do it on JavaScript, you could do it on C++, and you would just like this. Yeah, this, this is string. the same. This is it's the, the byte beat for PC Beaker. Okay, cool. That's nice. I, I did a few tracks on that, so so I, I can do sound for assembler intros now. That's great. <laughs> yes, you can do. But I guess you will be like 64 byte or like like 128 at, at most. Like dive into it, code your byte beat, and that's it. And then you, then you, you have, have 128 byte. You don't have Just much do space it. for anything else? Come to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not so much visual. Uh, let's go back to the last one. So yeah. this was apparently a boot intro, just uh, scrolling some text. Anything particular you want to tell about this one, Tomcat? Or just you it know, speaks it, for itself? It's, a, it's an easy uh, a, a fix, effect, uh, mm -hmm. rotating. Palette rotating, so, uh, but uh, what I want to say, uh, this is an intro for a tool, uh, it's a sample intro, uh, I, I made uh, a tool to put any uh, 256 intro to the boot, ah, to the USB boot. Okay, nice. So, so you if, can if have you easily have, bootable. Huh. So, Again, if you have USB, then make it bootable. And if it is bootable, put your favorite intro in the boot. Hmm, very interesting. This is, this, okay. this is the idea. Yeah. So I, I had to rewrite the boot code, the master boot code, and other thing to fit the intro in the master boot. <laughs> so okay. I had to optimize the master boot record. 
Uh, okay, let's move on to Sensen Stall's selections. And the first one he picked is a last terminal. This was made for a river wash. And this is by Elmwood, I believe. Uh, yes, it is. Nice sound. What did you use for the sound here? MIDI? Uh, it's just the, the MIDI, yes, it's a MIDI goblin string. And I figured I'd try a randomized harmonic there and just trying to get uh, the code into my brain back again because searching in full takes long. I think I jump like uh, five or seven notes back and forth randomly based on the timer and it just adds up to harmonics. I think that's around a bit. The basic effect is just, uh, I think the basic text effect is 16 bytes. And I was like trying to make something for this party. I don't know where this was released, but I did try to make something for the party. So I expanded it and stepped up the size categories. And then I ended at uh, 256 bytes. So it's not really size optimized, I think. It's just, it appeared to grow until it has reached the size. Um, yeah, that's it. It's just not totally random sound, but so random that you just choose a random number between one and three or uh, no, zero uh, and three. And then according to a small table, you jump back and forth the notes and play it and mute the ones which have been played four times before. Hmm. So yeah, you hear four notes, and then you play the fifth note, you read that one, and so on. Okay. You see. And, and this one is called like Revolver you. No Tube. So apparently this is not a tube. This is a revolver. No, it's not. <laughs> this got first place at Revision this year. So congratulations. Yes, yeah, surprisingly. To, to, to my total surprise, because there were so many good entries, and I didn't expect at all to win. Funnily enough, I, funnily, funnily enough, I predicted the outcome, the top three. I was just uh, sitting with a uh, Kummel and uh, Sensen style, and I was like, "Yeah, whatever. We take the top three, and we did." But it was totally, you know, every entry could have won. Uh, that this one did win, yeah, it makes me kind of proud. But I don't think I really earned this one because there were so many good entries. Uh, do you uh, want to talk about why there were so many tiny size intros on revision this year? <laughs> it was a conspiracy. We just <laughs> planned this. We just Did you guys like you were as arguing for there to be a compo for small size yes. intros? Was that the point? <laughs> yes. Do you think yes, you guys succeeded or will there be one we next year? Do you, <laughs> have have you see. heard anything from the organizers? Uh, uh, no, not yet. Hey. Did you? No, uh, but um, I also uh, hadn't talked to the organizers um, about the idea to uh, put uh, many uh, 256 byte intros into the wild Congo zone. Mm -hmm. We just did it. Yeah, and I mean, it worked. I mean, it, it was curious when I was watching the wild compo because I usually see a lot of other platforms mm -hmm. on the wild compo. This one was just 256 bytes, 256 bytes, 256 bytes. Okay, so someone is having fun. <laughs> But uh, well, yeah, we do. <laughs> well, and the fact that um, the first two places uh, were uh, tiny intros shows that there's uh, they well, had quality. Uh, it wasn't it, just spamming yeah, but, the entries. Uh, but but there's also uh, I guess a demand of the audience to see more. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is Auto Magic or Auto Magic by Helmut once again. So it's just standard fractal stuff. Yeah, it seems like this, because if you want to see the real thing, you have to look uh, up Autumn 64, because this is uh, where really magic happened. And this one, I tried to make it uh, animated, but with a, with, a time, with a number of uh, particles, I think it's a particle system, actually, a fractal particle system, I had to switch to protected mode. And it turned out it does not work, because I have protected mode, which is a lot of space, and I have high resolution. Like, it's really uh, some beta mode with uh, 1,000 times 768 pixels or something, but it didn't work. I figured out the hard way that it did, doesn't pay off to do protected mode and fractal particle animation stuff with two together. It just doesn't work. I mean, I think uh, it's awesome that it works, but, you know, it's uh, doable like Everbloom. Everbloom, I think, is more pretty. The fact is, the, the, the truth is, you don't need high resolution for this kind of effect. And I desperately tried to achieve high resolution and protected mode exactly for this, and it didn't like it didn't pay me back something. It mm -hmm. a lot of space and it didn't work. So yeah. If you okay. want the real thing, then go on Google and search for the autumn, the real autumn, the static fractal. I'm just putting it on Twitch. Uh, 
Okay. Because this is what I'm proud of, this one. And the animated version in 256 byte kind of uh, are a de is a, um, like a derivation of it. But yeah, it's not that good in my own um, perception. Yeah. Okay, moving on, we have Blob. So who, who did this? Is this by Sensental or by Tomcat? Oh. No, um, no, I no. guess I, I picked it. I think so. Okay, so it's yes, like it's, one of the random ideas. three people uh, not in our guests. Okay, so this one is by Spin of Abyss. Okay. Looks and it has good. very good colors, even uh, though let's, they are... Let's play uh, that again. He's coding in... Ami Plus. Amiga, I think, usually. Uh, this one is for MS DOS, but it's usually uh, Abyss is a, an Amiga group, yeah, and Spin does a lot of code for Amiga stuff. But this one is DOS in particular. So let's move on. The next entry is Comatose by Bizarre Devs. I always uh, this one like that one. Oh wait, is it uh, this? Oh, it's only eight seconds long. Okay, but it looks very good. It is. It's really awesome. It I think this is what very I'm slow in time. Quality of uh, of old uh, productions. This is a kind of quality we don't see nowadays because we. I mean, it's our fault uh, again at the same time because we try to optimize and optimize and optimize. But there's a special quality of these old intros which we don't see nowadays. It just looks so good. You know, mm -hmm. it's not far or small. It just looks good. I think yeah. maybe we should focus more on that. Like try to yeah. find a good looking effect first and then try to fit it into uh, 256 bytes instead of the other way around. Yeah, or re like make it really, really small. Like uh, don't stop at 256, just go down, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, 256, there's enough space for really beautiful stuff. Okay. Like this one. Next up we have Hell by XC. I think this is by Picard, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. From 2005. Yes. So, a lot of stuff that you see on modern ray tracers on pixel shaders nowadays, and back then made on 256 bytes. <laughs> was the early voxel kind of thing. Yeah, and this one is one of my all time favorites. It even has like a motion pictures. blur kind of thing. Yeah. Really nice. It it has good lighting, it has a good uh, palette, it has, it has good performance on a real system. Again, it looks just good, the, the camera movement, stuff we're just missing these days in our tiny intros. Just looks really good. Okay, next entry we have QB Taurus. Nice plasma on the background. So it's for QB party, I guess. Oh, I guess this one is from yeah. you, Tomcat? Yes, Hungarian flag. Oh, the plasma colors. turns into... <laughs> oh, this is supposed to be the Hungarian flag? The colors yeah. are a bit dark, though, aren't they? <laughs> um, <a> bit... <laughs> I like how the plasma transformed into the Taurus. That's an old trick, but it, it looks very nice. Yeah. yeah. A, a year before, <laughs> the winner intro has a QB logo. Then, then <laughs> I had some space. I do another QB logo for that. <laughs> and what is interesting it's, it's uh, only one effect so at the it's not, not two effect it's only one uh, and moving uh, from the first uh, frame to the last but between uh, meanwhile or during the uh, I, I stop it and see the torus and so the same is going on the back room. Mm -hmm. It's just different background. parameters, but the same. Effect. And, and uh, increasing, increasing, and now stop. And later it continues. See, see the end. And it looks like a transition, but it's only one effect. Mm -hmm. Just Very pause nice. in the middle. Uh, next up, we have Seashell. Which is a seashell. Yeah. Made with this, balls. This from, from me. It was on River Wash uh, last year. Okay. It's, it's true color. And this is why it looks so good, I think. I was very happy when I was able to do it in 256 bytes, this 
in throw. All right, you're doing another pass. Okay, to smooth it out even more. Nice. Okay. <laughs> New subscriber, thank you for joining. Moliva, or oh, SLP. Then we have Pokeball. I guess this is Pokemon influenced. Yeah, it's, it's a bit similar. Uh, it, it's a uh, retraced uh, spares as well, and 3D textures on it. Uh, from the normal vector, uh, I calculate the color of the texture. Mm -hmm. Why do you have a blue one there? Yeah, the, the Pokeball and one of them is Grey Ball. It's a different <laughs> te 3D texture. <laughs> okay. Because you can. Yeah, <laughs> why not? <laughs> it's, it's cute. I was very disappointed with this. Uh, was only six on the compo at Chaos Construction last, last year. Because uh, it, it happens sometimes, you know. Yeah, especially uh, people who are not programmers trying to evaluate if they like 256 bytes. It, it, it has to be hard. I mean, because they don't really know the tricks. Everything for them seems like it's pretty much the same thing or just a different way of doing it. So it's normal that the results are even more weird than with demos and intros. Yeah, but six. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Russian conspiracy. <laughs> I think, yes. Maybe I will skip this year, Chaos Construction. Uh, Cobalt Blue by Sense and Stall. This one looks very nice. It even has these forms forming while it's scrolling. Yeah, and, and actually, the routine to create those uh, shapes is basically the same like uh, the um, alien thing with the spaceship. Ah, the, the shooter thing. Yeah, it looks yeah, it's, similar. Yeah, it's basically the same. Hmm. Just uh, some different calculations. Okay. So hard it, recycling. This one is Barbarian. <laughs> I some, like uh, this. Side-scroller thingy. Design again on the maximum. <laughs> the max. Yeah, yeah you I have some nice colors. Yeah, and I wanted to have a scroller in uh, an intro, so there it is. Some greets. Greets to all size coders. Yes. Greeted outside. Oh, greetings back. I feel so uncreated right now because I'm not oh, a no. size coder. <laughs> <laughs> and PS. So next one you should do greetings to all size coders and PS. <laughs> yeah. Above. Oh, this one looks awesome. Yeah, this is really, really good. Default palette, I think, yeah. Yeah, yes. this was One actually, of the best ways I've ever... This was very fast done and finished, and I just re released it and was, uh, you know, blown away by the response it got. I never uh, thought about it. Maybe uh, the people were in the mood for um, liking it. Um, maybe it was uh, Gay Pride Month. And uh, you released it on... I uh... actually don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I think it looked like some movie or manga or some comic movie or something, but I think you hit a nerve right? just to see it. If I, when I first was looking at it, I think it was so easy, but it looks so good. I could have done it, but I didn't. So I, I really could <laughs> yeah. feel like it looks so good. It looks like something everybody knows. It's like a sky. It's like one movie of, a, of your childhood you may, may have watched or something like this. It hits a nerve and every person is... And, you know, it just yeah. touches people. I, 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 I'm just not sure about the rays of light, because usually the rays of light come from above the clouds, not from below. And these yeah, seem to be may, coming from maybe, below. Maybe uh, the sun is rising. Ah, okay. Yeah. I, I see you really thought about the concept there. <laughs> no. how, to, how to justify I, the concept. I, I had a version where it was upside down and it looked horrible. I didn't like okay. it, so I switched it, and uh, it looks good. Okay. Yes. Nice. Uh, next up, we have Elmut's selection, and it starts with Colorful, which is a ball ray traced on top of other balls. So why is it so slow? Because ray tracing is CPU expensive? 
Yes. Um, <laughs> many, many spears. Uh, so many spears uh, and many in, uh, intersection finding. But this will Wait. be easy to fix. To... Just load it on DOS box and put like the 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 speed really fast. You really have to look at the comments on port because I described what I have what I was thinking because I in the <laughs> same party I had like an intro which I optimized for real time animation seventy frames per second in uh, whatever and then I saw this one I was like why it's so slow. And then I was like not summing it up. And then I was thinking, wait, but it looks good if you just see the picture. And I was like, if this would be a procedural effect, I would be, yes, it's looking awesome. Like, look at it, straight trace balls. Why, it's, it's, it's great. It has this mirroring effect. It has so many uh, so many shades of color, so many objects, and it has high resolution. And so this is something which is different because everybody was like, we have to do grayscale two, uh, 330, uh, no, 320 times 200, like road low resolution, real time. And this was like the contrary. It was high resolution, it was colorful, and it was slow. So I was like, uh, I want to make a point here by selecting this one, because I want to invite people to explore this space more. Because you, we got stuck in there, you know? We, we have these intros which uh, all try to do the same. But this is a new approach, like do rendering, do real time rendering, just do one image, like one procedural uh, awesome image in 256 bytes. I think we can do like um, mountains and and rivers and and uh, trees and uh, you know cloud. Uh, procedural okay, graphics do... is kind of known in the demo scene now, but it's mostly you done yeah. using shaders. So for people who aren't familiar, what's the main difference between using shaders and using assembler to do these kind of images? Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, yeah just uh, I don't know. Uh, shaders is just the same thing. You you, you do shading in assembler as well. You just, uh, shoot a ray into the scene. And then, depending on what your geometric formula says, you will reach a point or you don't. And you, if you just define a fractal and define step by step where you could reach it, uh, you know, this stuff uh, works, works fluently on a modern graphics card. And it works like very, very, very slow on a, on a normal TPU. But that's not the point, because if you just render one frame, like give it five minutes, render one frame, make it look awesome, then, then you have something which nobody has ever done before. And I think this one is a step in the right direction. Like, go for it. Like, go for reflections. Go for shading. Go for lighting. Go for high resolution. I think there's much, much more possible. And this is why I, I finally made click in my head. Like, we have to explore this one more. This kind of, of tiny intro. Like, high resolution. Colorful. And then going for procedural uh, graphics like clouds and, and uh, mountains and trees and stuff like this. Maybe combine what I did the leaves and stuff and, and mountains and clouds with this kind of approach like make a really small uh, slow ray tracer which fits fits into 1256 bytes and produces a scene which looks like i don't know like elevated or something not like the elevated but uh, in 256 bytes but like an elevated um, kind of thing uh, which looks really like uh, a natural scene I think it's possible. We just look at some shaders how small they are and translate them to a sensor and do it and this okay. is why I found this. This is the first step, you know? This is why I chose this one. Okay, so this is a challenge for everyone out there. Try <laughs> to do elevated landscape in 256 bytes or 512 if you need that extra space, you know? <laughs> Try to make it as beautiful as you can, as realistic as you can, and uh, we'll evaluate the results in uh, a date that is to be determined. Well, you can submit it at a random demo party. You can submit it to Inertia Demo Party 2005 in 2018 if you want. You, you will get a special award if you do. So so there, there there's the challenge for today. Next up, we have Life and Life with sound. So everybody can sing along on the chat. Na, 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 na. <laughs> just because it's hilarious. Just, you know, like you look at the screen, you instantly know what's happening, you know the game, you see like sing along, you hear the melody, it's awesome. It's just really funny. Yeah, you know? Yeah, when I, when I watched this for the first time, I laughed out loud. And I sang along as well. <laughs> for a few seconds, you're like, na, 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 na. <laughs> Life is life. My family, my family was singing, were singing. 
when I done this in draw. <laughs> in every member of the family, in him, in his and her head, was singing uh, this <laughs> when they were listening to the music. Francis, yes. <laughs> Hey, yeah. next up we have Hyper Vibes, the original version. What's the difference between the original version and the non-original version? Uh, because it was on demo, demo bit and uh, there was a rule uh, for native DOS box. And the original version uh, has more iteration for this effect that uh, you see okay. now. And uh, the party version was uh, completely different. I recognize this music as well. Yeah. You're gonna it's get doing... a copyright a copyright uh, claim. <laughs> it's, it's a cover. <laughs> and I think it's first of But that yes, is it comes up. Which is interesting also. Uh, the rotation code, uh, I don't use FPU for it. It's, it's a, a triangle uh, function instead of sinus or cosinus. Okay. This is, this is why it's cool thing. Well, nice colors on this one. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Next three up. effects and, and music. Th th that's uh, it's possible. And <laughs> I think uh, uh, for 256, if you somebody want to win, usually needs music nowadays. I think this one is Amoeba. So Helmut, why did you pick this one? Uh, I picked some of the really small ones just to show people that uh, 256 is not a limit. You can go smaller and smaller and smaller. And this is kind of some uh, some kind of cellular effect, which I happened to discover by accident. Just look at the comments uh, which I wrote. So this is normally just a, a try to do a plasma in 32 bytes, but when I was trying to get to the right part of the palette to have this plasma effect, I accidentally uh, made this grow function appear totally by accident. You accidentally so, found an amoeba. Yeah, it was <laughs> not intentional. Intentional effect uh, is the last one when the thing stops growing. That was the intended effect. But I took it because it would look awesome. Yeah, I just wanted good. to do the plasma effect. So, and this was uh, I chose this because the first one is we have not explored uh, cellular automata to the maximum. I think the optimized version of this one without escape support has twenty six bytes. So I thought it was sixty four bytes, and apparently it's thirty two. So nice. It's twenty six bytes actually. Just you uh, for the escape checks, you have uh, some bytes more, like five, and then we have thirty one. I think. I don't even know. 31, 32. Oh, I see how it looks on, on Twitch. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Rip encoder. <laughs> yeah, pixels are not very good to encode. Uh, anyway, let's move on thing. to Dragon Fate. Yeah. Also 32 bytes. Yeah, also 32. And there's one version in the thread with, uh, with Escape. And the smallest dragon right now has even 16 bytes, just 16. And the one with 32 here is just because it fades and has some smooth color and all the stuff of the dragon fits into the screen. It's just uh, something which I found, which even I cannot fully explain. Besides, there is an explanation which I wrote on the Puet um, uh, forum uh, inside the fire color, I think it's called. I should mm -hmm. link it later. Where I describe what I do is like I found a way to not uh, abuse a random function because it's an iterative function system where you have two functions and by by chance you choose one of them and then you iterate and mm -hmm. slowly this thing starts growing. But this one is like fed into itself. It doesn't even need a random number generator. It just fed the coordinates back to itself and then by magic it just walks every point of the fractal to draw, draw it and then walks every point to erase it. So this makes the fading effect. There's no fading. It's just drawing the fractal one by one ah, uh, okay, in a discrete. 
-hmm. Yeah, in a d discrete, dis uh, deterministic way. Normally, this kind of fractal is uh, is a chaotic random fractal, and it's totally not deterministic. So just read up what I what I wrote in the thread. Yeah, and the next one you see right now is uh, the same principle with another formula, just the same kind of fractal, but with music. And I think uh, I chose this one because it's uh, the best MIDI track I've ever come up with. And the principle is quite uh, funny, because you just, um, <laughs> this is a secret, you just count up a value and then determine the frontmost bit of it. And then you have a selection of uh, samples and you choose sample number n, where n is the topmost bit. That's it. Okay. Of course, you have to you have to select. Uh, you have to do a good selection on the nodes. You just define a chord, and then you do the binary pattern stuff, and you do the same with the beat. Like there are seven uh, samples for the beat and seven nodes, and then you just do counting up the values and deliver, um, determining the frontmost bit, and then playing this uh, um, sample. And because uh, this is uh, like the first time I have done this, I think it can be much, much more improved if people actually dive into it and like take this approach of sound and make an often 250 spikes despite when it was it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, if you can have this already in 128, you can really do some nice sounds, some even better sounds for 256 byte intros. Yes, speaking of sound, uh, sorry Tony, but uh, speaking of sound, this is one of the intros where there's no sound, but you you know you hear the sound, you feel the sound. Just look at it in silence. <laughs> because it shakes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm hearing. It's all in your head. <laughs> yeah. This is some real magic, you know, because I have tried to produce sound and there is some guy uh, where I should have to the left right now. Yes, <laughs> there's some guy which uses zero bytes for producing sound in your head, and this is sensitive <laughs> stuff. <laughs> you you don't need to use MIDI. You can just use the power of your mind, the power of suggestion, yeah. the lazy way. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, uh, other than that, I think it's a real outstanding example of design. You know, just the colors and like he even made the color stand out, like literally ripping the strip apart and leaving a space there. And everything looks so designed. This is something I really invite. This is, uh, by the way, these kind of uh, intros are the way because uh, they are um, why we join forces, because he is the design guy and I am the country guy. And together we can do awesome stuff. Because I would never have even dreamed of doing something like this in 256. It's really, really cool. Well, yeah. and it is a good example um, of the time I spent uh, on the design because the uh, the stripe that goes from up to bottom, uh, I fiddle around quite a while to where to put it. So it's not just randomly put there. I set it here and there, and it took a, a lot of time. Are you actually using it on... Are you putting it on screen so use it as a reference pointer to do uh, like the, 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 the cycling of colors or something, or is just for stylistic no, it was, purposes? No, it was the, I had bites left and thought, oh yeah, a stripe is a nice idea to uh, give it more depth. So mm, okay. I just did it. Okay. And this one's called R, R7E1. And it, it reminds me of that evoke invitation with, uh, with the ladder hanging. I think it was yeah, made by Equinox. From Keops. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Go to revision uh, 2017. Okay. Yes. Okay, but if it's the. Okay, I'm confused now. If it's the from the intro from Keops of Equinox, that was for Evoke, not revision. So th this is like completely subverting the concept. It should say <laughs> Evoke 2017. Well. Hmm. Hmm. Oh no. <laughs> Anyways, next we have Inside a Sea of Soylent Green. This one looks very good. Like the blur yeah. on the thing really gives it a lot of depth. Too bad. Today is Wednesday, not uh, Tuesday, because Tuesday oh, is no. Soylent Green Day. Oh. <laughs> very good stuff. 
it looks three dimensional, but I figured because I was doing a capture, because the, the capture existing was really, really short, I figured there is no 3D. No, but it's, it looks so realistic. It's it just, looks like a super cool with the pieces inside. Yeah. It's just a, a blur effect on several layers. So. Yeah, I really love this one. Next, and the last one on uh, Helmut's pick is, well, now it's, it became a classic. It's A Mind is Born by LFT it's for the C64. And this really took apart revision when it was released. Uh, it's already two years ago, right? Yeah. It had a real great uh, effect because if you just compare the numbers of views on YouTube, it has like 100,000 views or something, which is uh, it, which is a, um, an achievement which uh, almost no other production had around these days. Uh, you know, LFT like, is a very famous guy even outside the demo scene. So he has a lot of uh, videos that became viral, so his channel has a lot of followers, so that helps a lot to promote uh, yeah, that his is true. releases. I chose it anyway. I wasn't even impressed when I saw it first because I did my speaker before. It was half the size. It was a better graphic effect. But this is different. This is, you know, the, the progression of the sound is really awesome. And the bass kick at the end, like the bass and the bass kick, is really special. The kind of sound we hear is different. And uh, it's before. It's not, not a DOS intro. It's a C64 intro. I think these guys have it like like harder. And just to, to make a comparison of how important is this the size is, I think he did something similar before in 512 bytes, which is totally unnoticed. Just go search for LFT on Pulit, and with 512 bytes, it's almost the same. It means like the defect in the little bit of sound, and I wrote uh, in the comments, I wrote, I sent optimal, optimization possibilities for 256, and then he did it. And everybody was <laughs> playing it. So it was a collaborative work in the end. Ah, no, no, no. I just was realizing when I was, I, I think I know this one, I know this one, I have just seen this one, and then I was clicking on NFT and its corrections, and I found the, I can do it myself because uh, 512, there are not that many productions uh, which have 512. Uh, uh, let's, got... let's talk about other platforms uh, for a moment now. Most of the stuff we've been seeing is for DOS. There are a lot of people who do size coding for other platforms. I know Goblinish does a lot of stuff for the Spectrum, for example. And uh, we just see now LFT doing stuff for C64. I know the Atari people also do some stuff. Uh, so do you guys have like your, any of your favorites? I know I have a few favorites for JavaScript, but none of them have videos. So I couldn't really pick any of them. Um, but what are your favorites for other platforms? Do you have some? I guess I'll start with you, Helmut. Uh, T Storm from from P P o Poi. How how you how you call him? I call him Poi, this, but I don't know. Poi, twister effect. Uh, and the other one uh, I sent you on uh, the chat was <laughs> I have to scroll up. Um, Wolfenstein. Where yeah. is it? Yes, this one. Yeah, that one was pretty good. As and I remember he did another you, one can... called, was it Mantle Bulb or something like that? And Porosian is mentioning it's Voltra. Not... Yeah, but Voltra is a 1K, so it's already kind of cheating. But, uh, but yeah. yeah. The other one was uh, the, the Mandelbrot Zoomer in the, the text mode in 256. But uh, yeah. it's difficult for these guys because the, the restrictions on the hardware are so uh, yeah restricting, as in the world. It's so much more easy to do it on DOS that every decent uh, C64 or Amiga, Atari, whatever production deserves a lot of respect. Even if JavaScript, if you see a JavaScript intro from somebody in 256, just uh, have in mind, it's really, really difficult to put something up. Just because uh, Poi is a genius doesn't mean it's easy to do something. <laughs> something uh, yes. And of course, on JavaScript, you have that JS1K competition that happens almost every year. So uh, there are, yeah. you can see a lot of interesting entries there. Uh, now we are watching stuff from Dhalt 2018, which just happened last week. This was Invader by Denis Grochev. And now we are watching Reads Only to Diver by ATS, which is a follow-up to No Reads to Diver by Sim Crew. <laughs> so did any of you guys participate on the on Dhalt, like remotely? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> Not this one though, because this is Spectrum. 
And I, I guess Tomcat, you know Spectrum, so have you tried to do any size limited stuff on Spectrum recently? No, no, not, not yet. Uh, I completely forget. Uh, I know the instructions, but I don't know the tricks. Uh, hmm. Maybe some days I, I will try it again. I'm, I, I, Spectrum was my first computer, so I always have this attachment to it, even though I never... Well, I did one demo on Spectrum with some Russian guys once, but I never programmed it, so I always have this feeling that I should go back to Spectrum to stuff. Anyways, this is Wolfenstein clone, apparently. It's called Chimp Ion by Kael and Firex of Mayhem. This is awesome. I have to vote on this one. I, I think I forgot to vote on this one. I think these guys, you know, normally when I see these intros for, for another platform, especially for ZX, I totally forget that this is not DOS. They have to do something completely different. They have to, like, totally mess with the hardware or something, to even make something scrolling or 3D-like or protecting, you know, because they don't have any of the power. Like, they have 1% of the hardware power of a, of a PC, which we use for our demos. So, uh, respect those every quarter out there even trying to code something like this because it has to be a real pain in the ass and requires a lot of tricks. And normally, if you could look at the uh, the outcome, you see, yeah, it's, it's not 3D, it's not fluent, it has no lighting, you know, no fluent camera parts, but it's it's nothing like this. It's like really, really difficult to do stuff on these systems. Uh, what are you going for now? This one is a smiley, apparently. And I think it's only yeah. the happy smile. Oh, it shows the, the assembler on it. Okay, that's interesting. So you can actually <laughs> see. You missed the, the intro. Let me, let me oh, yeah. it from the beginning. Hold on. Because here it skipped a part. I don't know if it skipped on your, on your guys' computers as well. It, uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Come on, type. It, it, it was me. <laughs> okay, Mr. be happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. So different kind of smileys kind of thing. This is one of those intros where the idea is just amazing. It's, it's funny and it's uh, different. It's probably done everything with the circles or parables. Yeah. Like a yeah, some, exclusive. <clears throat> yeah, looks three like it. Sh three shapes. Vertical and horizontal uh, ellipse mm -hmm. yeah. and circle. I really like uh, the SpongeBob. It's like with the, you know, what uh, the other guy did, uh, the Mona Lisa for C64, where you just realize what you see because you have the original in mind. And the same happens with a smiley because I instantly think about SpongeBob. And so for me, this is a SpongeBob effect. And this is why, this is why I like, and so even wrote in the poet, uh, Ted, which one is your favorite smiley? And I instantly know the answer. Yes, the SpongeBob one. I mean, how could it not be my favorite? <laughs> uh, check yeah. out the next one. It's called Vanitas 2.0 by Goblinish. Nice little spirograph effect. I think the colder just ripped again with this one. It has so many dots that. On YouTube itself is already screwed up, so I, I guess through the live stream is even worse. <laughs> yeah, not uh, fine on on Twitter. Okay. You know, a Goblin a Goblinish is uh, the guy where I where I wish or I hope that he finally focuses on one platform to make an awesome intro because he just raids every platform out there and tries to leave his mark, but he never takes his full power to do one awesome demo. He just does it all. And I, I really I th hope he does. I think he, he has think? like this uh, system where he can compile for the different uh, targets. So he just, and the, the assemblers are pretty similar. So he already knows the tricks and then he just explores different platforms at the same time. That's what I thought of it. Yeah, I could be wrong, of course, but that's the idea that I got from it. Okay. What about this one? This one oh. it was an, an ode to Adox uh, programming commentary, I guess. It's called Porsche yeah, Breisbrung. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know oh, if yeah. I said that right. <laughs> it is by you, Helmut. So 32 bytes on uh, x86 yeah, sampler. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, doing some, uh, I had a mission. I, I wrote it on Broad and Poet. I want to do uh, animated 64 biters, which look good. 
But uh, as in my nature, I step back to 32 and ask myself, can uh, 3D be done in 32 bytes? Uh, I it's fake 3D, like, but... It's, it's fake. I didn't succeed with the tunnel so far, but I was just looking who did it before. And I found a tension star with an intro um, having fake 3D. And it has like a city is by Tropolis or by Vegas. I don't know anymore. One of these is a 32 bytes. But it wasn't like what I was looking for. It was not uh, like um, like deep enough. And so well, I found. How many uh, layers do you have here? Sixteen. Sixteen, 16 okay. layers. Did you and use any brought... tricks from the Amiga compo that had the checkerboard thing? Because uh, I remember Blueberry did a very interesting write-up on how he could do like shifts to reuse the stuff I and optimize. You didn't? I didn't read this. This is one of the Ray Castle actually. It's a, it's pretty based on what Rona did with his Parallax. He did mm. something with triangle, but he had a wrong parallax, like the stuff in front was moving slow and the back was moving fast, and he had a triangle. And what I did was just to find out how to do it with the right colors, like having these shades, like the then correct the uh, parallax effect, and then find a way how to create rectangles. This is a really tricky one. I have to do a write-up because what you see, this is checkerboards, but there are no checkerboards. This is something which is good um, with intention, and the original uh, effect looks not like it. You can, for example, go into the code and change the one constant from 409 to 408 or 410, and it will just not look like this. I have to really elaborate on that okay. So what you see is not 3D, and it's not a checkerboard. It's just <laughs> a really way to produce a, it's a recasting. Like so you, it's you a see fake. The, I, I can't explain. I can explain. You see the moving part in front, the white stuff, and uh, whenever you step into a part where the stuff is not white, you iterate one plane further, mm -hmm. and you basically inside it with a shift. But okay. I don't know if the Amiga guys did it like this. I didn't read it because I think the hardware is just too different that I could use anything of this in 32 bytes. So maybe... Well, he, um, he had... You should check the article because it's very interesting, and he he does a way like not to draw when the when the the checkerboard is. So he only draws on the empty spaces, but he does that with shifts and pre-calculating all the table of those of those shifting. So uh, and that also speeds up a lot. So you should re definitely check out that article. It's really well written, and I think you'll learn a few nice mm -hmm. tricks out of that. Okay, I will do this and then write my own because it's really awesome how this, it's, 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 a, I can't even explain it right now. It's like a total coincidence that it actually looks like this. It should have never happened. Like with the Amoeba, you know, remember the effect with where it grows? It's totally remnant that this works. So, we go for the next one. Uh, this is not from the halt. This is already random stuff from uh, 512 bytes. This one has random sound and just a particle effect. It's actually, I think this can be done lower than 512 bytes. What do you guys think? Yes. I agree. Mm. I'm not too impressed, uh, <laughs> to be honest. I just turned up the sound and was like, yeah, that's random. And the particles, okay, the particles are fine. But yeah, it's like um, like where you draw particles and then take the screen and blur it and move it and then draw particles again. So I get the idea. Yeah, nice, nice. But nothing really outstanding, I think. Sorry. <laughs> you just don't understand art. But let me see who made this, actually. Uh... This was by Kyoko, I believe, or at least Kyoko added it to to uh, to, to what? This was released at Two CH Party, so it's a, a Japanese entry when they were still getting into the demo scene. So yeah, not very optimized, but uh, nice effort nonetheless. Uh, the other entry I have for 512 is for the ZX81 by Noise. It's called Severally Limited Capabilities. And it just yeah, it's, it's just this plasma effect. So not not very good entries from the five hundred and twelve bytes category. I I found a few more, but there weren't any video capture of it. So 
It's a little bit constrained. Let's go back to 500 or to 256 byte stuff. Uh, yeah, this one is awesome. Uh, do you want to talk about that one or shall we skip to no, this? No, no, just leave it that way. This is what I meant when I said, you know, this kind of lighting, we are missing this uh, right now. Mm -hmm. There is no lighting anymore in 256 byte anymore. And I can't uh, see why, because this is what you asked earlier, because this is just shading, you know, just in a sender. And it's, you know, it works because the resolution is so small that actually if you optimize it a bit, it can work on a real system. Oh, again, such a small platform. Another one with shades. This one is awesome too. This one is Sekmen by Devreshi, released in 2010. It really it's... makes me think if all the talented people have somehow left the scene, because uh, with a good example again, with an example of Bot Surfer, who also has left the scene for known known reasons so yeah, lots of her comes and goes he he comes and then he releases some stuff and then he gets some shit and gets into drama and then he leaves again that's that's usually I, i've known him for like two or like uh, uh i wanted to say uh 12 years over 12 years probably and uh there's always been some controversy around him but the guy can code i mean this is good code this is this is some yeah I mean, respect to that. Despite all the bullshit and controversies, he does some good intros. So, uh... Um, he does. It's like a whole city in 256 bytes. Yeah, that's awesome. I have to agree. And this that's one's so also beautiful. awesome. This is Symmetry by Rola. Rola has been doing some awesome uh, small-sized stuff for years now. This one is mind blowing. Like high resolution and everything. The stream is probably dying at this point. Uh, no, it's not. It's actually quite good at really? uh, picking the effect, yes. Good. <laughs> I have no idea. And uh, Rola gave a seminar on how to get started or get back into assembly coding at Demobit last year, Demobit 2017. I watched that and there's a recording of that. Very interesting stuff, like he shows like some uh, tricks that you can do to optimize stuff. He goes through the basics and then he goes into some more uh, tips and tricks. So if you guys haven't seen that seminar, I highly recommend you to check it out. Look for this Rola year. to Demobit. 2017 this, and you'll be able yeah, to Yeah, but this it. year, then a he continued the presentation. Oh, you gave the, another the, session. The part, I wasn't at Temo this two. year's. Yeah. Okay, he, that's he good. the part two. Is there a recording of that as well? Yes, but not on YouTube, but you can search for Google. Okay. Uh, and I think it's interesting that we have these seminars explaining stuff. So if you're like a newcomer and you know Assembler, you want to get into the demo scene, you can just, you know, check those two uh, seminars and you're, you're good to go to, to be able to do an entry and start being productive. I think, I think we just compiled all the tricks uh, we have on sizecoding.org. And I think uh, Rola and even Tomcat had the seminars, but I think uh, from what I feel, there's still some, some steps missing, like how to really go into it. I tried this with like the really small examples, like how to output a pixel, how to output text, and then go from there. And even when I see Rola, I'm thinking this, yes, this stuff is too easy and this stuff is too hard. So, you know, sometimes when he gets into his real tricks, even I don't understand what he's saying anymore. And the other yeah. stuff is too obvious, too obvious. So uh, I think we still should all work on how to explain this stuff to people. Because if we know it and we are not the most genius people in the world, then other people can do this as well. We just have to explain it in a proper way. So maybe we should incorporate it. Uh, one, one thing that we've always been seeing is that people tend to have open source of their of their size coding stuff, uh, which I think is yeah. useful. Sometimes it's missing comments there, like explaining the tricks why you coded stuff like this, but it's really nice. And on other productions of the demo scene, you don't really see it as often, like people showing all the source code right in the info file. So I think that's a good tendency that might help get more people. Well, in the end, you can just disassemble uh, tiny intros, so there's no point yeah. in not uh, revealing the source, the source code. And so, 
and the comments are for my part uh, just to remember uh, a few years later what I did there so Lattice. and uh, that tunnel we also saw by Lattice by 3SC this one is very good as well and uh, I think this is one of the highest rated on uh, on Puet along with Tube which I have here so I will play that as well Tube by 3SC I think this is the highest rated uh, 256 byte intro on Puet uh, we have a couple more intros to show before we end the show. This is Diffuse, or Diffuse, I don't know how to call it. And he uses the Diffuse, diffusion yeah. effect, and it has MIDI sound as well. So very nice. I even know what the instrument is without even hearing it, because uh, not because I look, because I know what the instrument is, because I think it around myself, it's uh, one of the electronic pianos, and it just goes up a scale. Dum, 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 dum. This one uh, awesome. I wanted to talk about something in particular, like some intros are a lot more popular just because of uh, the name that they pick. And uh, one of them is, of course, Tunnel. We already shown it and talked about it. The other one is the one by LFT, just because it's popular. There's one in particular called WWW Porno Tom. Yeah. And that one is extremely popular on Puet, just because people search for porno and they find this entry and they, they, they go check it out. Even though the entry is nothing particularly interesting, there's not even a capture on YouTube about it. I was thinking actually I should do a capture because I will get like shitloads of viewers on my channel, just of people randomly <laughs> looking for porno. So uh, that, that would be interesting to have. But uh, what are your, your thoughts on popularity of intros? Are they, if you look at the tops on Puet, do you think they are okay-ish or are they wrong or are they just naturally subjective do you have any thoughts on this that, that depends yes of course i have an opinion on this that depends uh, the first thing is i noticed uh, some kind of quality or some certain aspects of demos like lighting or stuff is just gone by now people don't do this anymore and the other one is like there are fewer people i can't really judge because i'm not that uh that um you know old member of demo scene because you know i'm just around for like five years now but it seems like even state-of-the-art productions like uh, objectively doing things better and being more beautiful or stuff like this get like 30 percent of the upvotes uh, of old school famous productions so it can't just be that the stuff got worse it's just people are leaving the scene or they are leaving poet or they don't just care anymore there's uh, some kind of relation there you, you know uh, because um good productions had like 200 or 300 up sounds or even 400 and not even a mega pool uh, but you guys to understand that those thumbs were accumulated throughout the years and newer releases actually have uh, you find comparing older releases added to the database and newer releases released recently they usually have more comments the newer ones than the old ones have because they were added to yeah. Puet at a time where people weren't really paying attention and they just had like one two three comments yeah, of course that's but uh, you just have to look on the on the time frame when you when you plot. I do I do in the mind. I didn't actually plot the values, but they they accumulate this um, votes or up sums in this amount of time, all almost ninety percent. And then there comes a long range of time where nothing happens anymore. Yeah, which I is slow. Normally, nowadays you release your demo and then you get some votes for I don't know weeks or months and then it's gone. Nothing happens. Yeah, I, I, but I mean, that happens with demos as well. Uh, I had a lot of demo releases where I put them online and then, you know, I get a couple votes and then no one says anything about them anymore. And you're left wondering, oh, okay, I don't have any feedback on this. I don't know if people liked it or not, or if they just never heard of it before. So that comes across all of the demo scene releases, not just tiny size intros, in my opinion, yeah, at least. Yeah. I don't know. Do, if you guys agree or not, I'm asking for the people on the chat as well. Do you guys have any opinions on that? Let us know on the chat. And I don't know what else is there left to discuss. Sense and style, do you have any opinion on popularity stuff of intros? Uh, well, um, things um, I don't know how to how to how to describe it, but um, when uh, production gets added, take a party with 20 releases. Uh, 
there's always more productions on top and you can't watch everything. So your production uh, gets views uh, when it's released and then there are more uh, productions where people have to search for it because mm-hmm. it's uh, right under a lot of new productions. So maybe that's the reason why maybe there's... Maybe we could uh, have like a, a show like the 256 byte intro of, of the week or something like that. Or a highlight on Puet or Demozu or something. Well, I wouldn't mind. So <laughs> <laughs> you, you would be the the one of the perfect curators to handle that sense and style because you're you're one of the guys who's always like adding old BBS intros that uh, people haven't seen in ages and commenting on older 256. Yeah, bytes. and nobody and no, almost nobody cares about uh, <laughs> the fact that I'm adding them. So, but I see a lot. That's why you just I'm... want to have the database completed, yeah. Yeah, and you see so much. I'm just in the scene since uh, 2010, like I said, but I'm already an old grumpy fart <laughs> because I've seen so much stuff that's horrible. Oh yeah, something that we haven't talked about is the collection by Pirks and Tigru. They had this group called End. They did a few 256 byte intros. Some of them were quite famous, and they did this compilation of uh, 256 byte intros. So, do, do you guys recall that? I guess Sense and Stalin and Helmut. You guys are more recent. You probably don't I know. I guess. Do you, do you mean the uh, the hot code zip? Uh, it's, maybe. It's I don't ar- remember it's the archive, name anymore. It's, well, it's an archive that goes up to um, 64K for uh, Windows, DOS, even It's not JavaScript. that one. This one was no, specific. No. Yeah. Uh, this one. I don't know that, actually. Hold on then. I'll find it. It's probably on end. Uh, if I could find it. If I could find but I it. Guess, but I guess all the releases are in uh, hot code, so... It was organized by Pirks and um, and uh, Tigru. That's what I remember. That's what I remember. I think you're making it up right here because I know Tigru and Pirks. Uh, they are known for their excellent intros and bits. Uh, are these guys which produce horrible intros? Is this, isn't this right? <laughs> this stuff where everybody votes down and writes free club and I don't know. Yeah, it's hard bit. code. You were right. It's called hard code. Uh, Sense install was right. So I'm gonna post a link here on. Uh, so this is the site of End, and if you scroll all the way down, pass through their intros, you have this section called Hard Code, and yeah, you go to that page. It's called Hard Code. Just host it here, and it has a collection of uh, several intros. Yeah, it's actually uh, the biggest archive of its kind, as far as I know, where you got uh, all sorts of intros up to 64K in one file. I, I thought it was only up to 1K and not 64K. That's why I thought you were wrong. But yeah, it's, it's well, maybe code. maybe maybe in the beginning, but then 64K, why not? OK, so I think that's it. Uh, do you guys have any last things you want to talk about or any specific intro that you want to take a look before we end the stream? I just noticed something. Uh, look this intro. Mm-hmm. This is by Ian. Uh, this is by Pirx and Tigru. Yeah, by Tigru. And here is another one. I add it to the list, I think. Uh, yeah. It is the same effects. But yeah, but this was a extra. common effect that you could do, like a distortion kind of thing. But never noticed that uh, the previous one, the disco effect, was the same. It, it looks so good, I, I didn't realize that this is the same effect. Yeah. Yeah, because it has like that glow kind of thing going. It looks like similar colors to some of more recent Poi intros as well, uh, like the Voltra and the other one, the Mukultra, I think it's called. So very curious stuff. It yeah, this awesome. distortion see, effect was, was pretty standard. Like you can do a tunnel effect with this, and if you use the different formula, you have this ball thing in the middle, as you see here. 
So this effect was pretty common to distort planes back um, in the 90s. So I remember coding uh, this before as well. And you can see them like in many platforms, uh, like Bright Light is the king of this effect. He puts this on all his intros. Amiga and Atari and whatever, there's always this effect on it. <laughs> I did one, I did this uh, Amiga ball bouncing with the same effect, but uh, due to a kind of friendly overflow, the outside is not visible, you just see the inside like a ball. And mm -hmm. this fits in 64. So it's precisely 64 and you can have like a ball bouncing with uh, some kind of shading even. If you look for, I don't know, Boeing, uh, Amiga Respectro on Pooh, you will find a 64 white version with a, with a, with a ball, bouncing ball. Yeah. But anyway, I wanted to say, I want uh, so uh, much to for these guys to come back, like Perks or T-Crew or Rola or even Digimind to do more than his uh, obligatory um, function intro. Because really, I think there's something missing in the demo scene. Because uh, we can only do so much. Oh, is this uh, Spawn G? Yeah. This is just running on the pitch now. It's 128 bytes by TBC, by mentor of TBC, the same guy who uh, ended up doing Crinkler yeah. with Blueberry. Really, I think stuff. this was the first ever that ray, ray tracing or ray casting in 128 byte uh, does work. And I think I, this I, is what. Um, I remember Poi, yes? Poi then ported this to JavaScript as well. It was like a JavaScript version yeah. of this. In 512 bytes, if I recall correctly. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit yeah. larger. A really yeah. cool stuff. Uh, what so parties are there with competitions yeah. for uh, size Z intros? Uh, we know that Revision doesn't have one. Function has it. Uh, Demobit has it. Uh, what else? River Wash. Real River Wash. Uh, not Lix, apparently. Polision is saying on uh, the chat. It has 512 bytes. Uh, then Outline has a special 128 competition, hmm. which is kind of odd. Yeah, anyway. There are plenty, but I don't have them in, in mind right now. I don't, I don't know. I remember there used to be this party in Germany called AOAAAA or something like that, which had a lot of uh, oh, tiny yeah. size intro compos. So that would be nice if a party nowadays would have like similar compos and try to, you know, get all the big brains of uh, tiny size coding to participate at the same time to have a really cool combo. I think Function is already trying to do that and other parties that we just mentioned. Uh, so yeah, Dhalt also has a lot of entries as we already watched. So yeah, if you guys don't have anything else left to say, I'm going to end the show. So last chance. Last uh, message. Make, make, make more tiny intros. People. And come to function. Yeah. Let's come to function. Yeah, and whatever you see, whatever you see and think this is awesome, don't think it's awesome. Just dive into it and realize it's not that awesome. It's just math and maybe you're talented enough to beat whatever you see. Just don't stop at wow. Just go to go make wow into why and improve it. This is mm -hmm. my last word, I think. That's a nice message. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching the show. Thanks our guests, Tomcat, uh, Sense and Stall, uh, and Helmut. Thank you so much for coming here. I, I wanted to do a show on tiny size coding for a long time, and this I think this was a great show. So thank you guys for being here, for joining us. I also have to quickly thank our uh, Patreon supporters, Garfield, Punctured, Jeff, uh, Paul Jean Papit, Jakub Pamulski, El Topo, Fulcrum, Pixel Nerve, Paul Falcão, and Get It to Wessendorf. Thank you so much for your support on Patreon. You guys rule. And of course, the guys on the chat, thank you so much for joining us and asking questions and commentating. Uh, yeah, and see you next time. Go to the ran randomly next demo party showing up. Uh, there is Assembly, there is Inertia, of course, there is Evoke. Function, so many demo parties. It's it's summertime. Summer is the time for demo parties. So go to those demo parties, and yeah, that's it. Bye bye everyone. Take care. See you next time. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.